This week on Theme Park Worldwide, the show, Ireland's brand new wooden roller coaster at Taito Park is now open. We're going to be looking at some exciting new developments coming to Tokyo Disney. And along with all that, we've got much more, including Merch Paradise, Interact With Me, and Ask Me Anything. My name's Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide, the show, and that means it's time to cue those titles. And of course, a very warm welcome to this week's episode of the show. Obviously, it's been a bit of a difficult week for us theme park enthusiasts this week. Uh, so I'm going to hopefully lighten up the mood this week uh, and tell you a little bit about what's to come on theme park worldwide in the coming months. It's summer season. The weather might not be quite just there yet, but it is the summer. Uh, so what have we got coming up? Next vlog's to come here on the channel. We had Flamingo Land the other night. Uh, coming up next, you've got the York vlog, York City Centre. We had a good look round and saw some of the attractions there, including the York Dungeon, our review of that, the National Railway Museum, and a few other things that we visited, which would be great to see. Following that, we've got our Fantasy Island vlog later this week, and also Butlins Skegness, where we're going to be at Butlins looking round, and also uh, Bottoms Pleasure Beach, which is down in Skegness Centre itself. Some really good vlogs to come on the channel. Next week then we're going to be on location with the show at Thorpe Park and Leesburg Amusement Park in Sweden as well. Uh, along with a vlog from Leesburg that will be online uh, next week as well, later next week here on the channel. Following that, at the end of June, we're going to be at Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen, uh, where we're going to be 10 nodes of Denmark, seeing the park for the first time. Again, there'll be a show and a vlog from the parks as well. We're also going to be visiting Bakken, which is another smaller park in Copenhagen. Uh, so quite a lot to come in June. Busy time for us here on the channel and lots to see and do. On another note, uh, I don't know if any of you noticed, but our subscriber count here on Theme Park Worldwide has gone through the roof lately. Uh, and we are about to hit a massive number and a really big number for me, and it's 20,000 subscribers. I'd like to thank every single one of you for watching these shows, the vlogs, uh, any on and off ride videos that we're doing on the channel. Obviously, we're coming up to a thousand videos as well, but what's going to come literally in the next couple of days is 20,000 subscribers. Uh, so, thank you all of you very much. Obviously, Theme Park Worldwide is in its fourth year now. Uh, I wouldn't think that in that short space of time we could grow to be such a big channel. It just shows how many of you out there love theme parks. You don't have to be a theme park enthusiast and know how many bolts there are in roller coasters to enjoy our channel. Our channel is about having fun, reviewing the park, seeing what there is to do, and obviously giving you any tips to go out there as well. Uh, so obviously it's great for everyone, and I'm really glad you are all enjoying theme park worldwide. Obviously, it's a great year for us. We've got California coming up, the big trip of this year later on uh, in September as well. So thank you all very much for all the support. I do really appreciate it. Anyway, that's all for our theme park worldwide news. Let's move in then to this week's News Off The Rails. Now last week I mentioned of a brand new wooden roller coaster opening at Tato Park in Ireland. It opened on Saturday just gone and wow it's had some great reviews. I know quite a lot of you have been out there as well to ride it and I can tell just by looking at some of the footage that this is a top quality wooden coaster. Obviously it's been made by the Gravity Group, they designed this awesome ride uh, and the pace now it looks fantastic. Two and a half minutes of sheer excitement. It, from the top of that lift hill all the way to the brake run, it's got some great speed to it. It carries the speed really, really well, uh, which is great to see. Looks like some great drops and airtime in there, uh, and it just looks like a fantastic ride. I can't wait to get out there to Ireland next month. That's July 2015 here on the channel, where I'll be riding it. This thing looks absolutely awesome. The pacing, like I say, is great. As it goes round them corners, it's really picking up speed, and it carries it all the way to the end. It does feature an overbank. They're sort of classing it as an inversion. Whether it's an inversion or an overbank, I'll leave you to decide. I personally would class it more of an overbank. It sort of tilts you on its side, sort of like this. Looks amazing. The speed through that looks great as well. Uh, it's a lot longer ride than I was expecting as well from the Gravity Group. Uh, it just looks fantastic. I'm going to show you a little video now. Watch the reporter's face. It is quite funny as he enjoys the brand new wooden roller coaster at Tato Park.
amazing does that ride look? So close to us here in the UK as well, so you just have to nip over to Ireland on a short flight or drive over there, get the ferry, uh, and go and see this brand new ride. It looks absolutely awesome and uh, something I can't wait to experience next month here on the channel. 8.5 million euros that ride's cost. What an absolute bargain for such an amazing coaster. Uh, I can't wait to just get out there and try it. Tato Park's got some other great rides. They've got an air racer, rotator, uh, massive zip line. So it's gonna be great. We'll do a vlog next month and it looks like it's gonna be me and Charlotte on for that one. So it's gonna be really nice. Uh, I can't wait to try out the brand new coaster. Now I keep calling it the brand new wooden coaster at Tato Park, mainly because I'm not too sure how you pronounce the ride's name. Obviously I'm not Irish, but uh, well, I'd be worried if this accent was Irish. <laughs> More stoke on trans. Um, but yeah, any Irish people out there, could someone send me a voice recording of how to pronounce this coaster? I call it Shashalane, but I don't know if that's right. It's probably not. As you know, I struggle to pronounce people's names, never mind uh, Irish named roller coasters. But hey ho, it looks great. Even though I can't really pronounce the name, it looks awesome. Here's a little shot of the grand opening in the entrance there as well. Uh, really nice piece of entrance archway theming. Again, it reminds me of Woden so much, uh, the way this ride is. Obviously, uh, Woden's a GCI coaster, but just in terms of the looks and the feel for it, uh, you know, it does look quite similar. So really, really pleased. Uh, really good ride there. Moving on then to Tokyo Disneyland. Now I mentioned earlier in the year about some of the investments going on. Got a few more details. Of course, Fantasyland is having a huge redevelopment over the park over the next few years. Uh, basically, they're retheming two of their areas in Fantasyland to Beauty and the Beast and Alice in Wonderland. Uh, got a little concept to me to show you there. Uh, that looks really nice actually. You can just see Beauty and the Beast in the new area, castle in the background. Uh, looks really good to see the improvements. Now, something that really interests me is the park called Tokyo Disney Sea. It's their second gate park. It's located right next door to the main Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, and wow, Disney Sea looks great. You've got a different version of Tower and Terror in there uh, and all sorts of things. But what they're actually going to be putting in is a brand new sort of area. It's the eighth sort of island to be built there. Uh, and what it's going to be, it's going to be based on Scandinavia. Uh, Rumoured to have a large e-ticket frozen dart ride in there as well. Uh, that I'd like to see go in at the park. So yeah, it's the eight theme ports. All the ports there look amazing. Um, you know, it just looks like a beautifully themed park. Some of that theming reminds me of Islands of Adventure at Universal and Port Aventura, sort of mashed together uh, to create what is probably the most beautifully themed park there is out there in the world. Not only then are they putting in uh, that new attraction there, they're also announced that they're going to be opening another brand new ride. And it's going to open in 2017. It's more like a 4D cinema, this one, but it's based on Nemo and Dory. It's going to the Port Discovery section of the park. Uh, it's going to be a sort of an interactive ride where you're going to sit on like a simulator uh, slash 4D cinema and there's going to be all sorts of effects. Uh, but for £25 million, that's a conversion rate um, from their currency over there, it's a lot of money to spend on what is basically a glorified 4D cinema. But knowing Disney, it's going to have a lot more special effects and stuff to it and theming which is going to make it amazing so again here's a concept image of how that looks uh, there you go you can just see it is based like a normal 4d cinema but it will have some surprises it's disney they like putting in the little surprises there uh, the current storm rider simulator what's there at the moment rumored to be closing in may uh, 2016 to allow for construction to begin so yeah it's going to be a big ride and uh, you're going to get shrunk down to the size of a fish in that attraction and explore the vast underwater world from uh, Finding Nemo and also Finding Dory as well. Great Disney film, uh, Finding Nemo, absolutely love it. So there, looking good. Finally then, in our news for this week, and news off the rails, uh, is a bit of sad news, but also happy news from Dreamland in Margate. I'll start with the happy news. The happy news is Dreamland in Margate, just a couple of weeks away now from opening. Uh, obviously this park shut down many years ago. There's been fires, there's been all sorts. It's had some bad luck, that park. It's now opening Dreamland Margate as a heritage park. Loads of new attractions going in there. Uh, but this is where the sad news comes in. Unfortunately, their signature ride, uh, the Switchback Railway, is going to be closed for, for the opening of the park in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, it won't be finished in time for the grand opening, which is a shame. But if you are going that day, all while it's closed, you are going to get a free ticket to come back to the park uh, when they announce that it's open. The reason it's not finished, the track and everything's all done on the station, is the trains, they're still finishing restoring them trains, uh, but I've got full sort of credit to them for doing this, and the fact it's gonna be a little late isn't a big issue. I mean, they're giving out complimentary tickets to go back, so that's really good of the park. Um, don't let that put you off, like I say, A, you get a ticket to go back, plus you also get 17 other attractions, uh, you know, upcycled retro rides, uh, what are in there as well, all sorts of different amusements, and they're gonna be open. 
Uh, not to mention as well the roller disco, what they've got, pleasure gardens as well, and arcades and sideshows, all sorts of stuff from the golden age of the British seaside. Going to be really nice to check out Dreamland Margate uh, when it opens in a couple of weeks' time. We'll be there later in the year when the switchback's on, and I can't wait to show you guys here on the show. It's time for Merch Paradise, and this one's going to make you laugh this week with what I'm going to show you. Uh, something a little bit different. It's not such merchandise from a park that you can buy, but it is from a park. It's from Terra Mythica in Benidorm. How I've managed to get this is my parents have been on holiday over to Benidorm, and they've just managed to get me this from asking when they visited the park. Uh, they're not really theme park enthusiasts, but they went to try it out while they were over there. Obviously said what rides they've got. They gave it a go, uh, and yeah, it sounds like they had fun. And also brought me this. Now this is a map stand from uh, Terra Mythica. Now as you can see, it's got sort of the 15 years at the top. Terra Mythica, nice cardboard, and also it's full of park maps as well. So this would normally sit, oh, I suppose, in their guest suits, a reception area, or may maybe in the local hotels around the area as well, advertising the park. So yeah, really nice map stand there, full of maps. I think that was great presents to bring them back from holiday. But now how much I love the parks and merchandise, hence all this uh, world of theme parks full. But yeah, thank you very much for that. Also, I've had a bit of merchandise sent in for this week then. Let's have a look at what I've got. Uh, it's Imo Prescott with a selection of merchandise from the Orlando Parks. Hope you enjoyed our Orlando special last week, by the way. Uh, it was great to see all the discussion going on down below about the Orlando Parks. And like I say, that brand new hypercoaster looks absolutely awesome at SeaWorld. Can't wait to see that when it's finished. That's all for Merch Paradise. It's time for Ask Me Anything. Questions, questions, questions everywhere. So it's time to Ask Me Anything, the part of the show where you send me in questions and I answer them for you here on the show. Uh, four questions get sent in each week, which you guys have sent to Theme Park Worldwide Admin Charlotte via Twitter and Facebook. Make sure you keep sending your questions in. I'm nearly getting through all the ones that have been asked now, so keep them coming in, guys. I'm sure you can find some random stuff to ask uh, for me here on the channel. Obviously, Theme Park related, attractions related. Uh, if you also want some help with booking trips, just send in your questions. I can do it here for you on the show. So have a little look then at four for this week. So Daniel Fotheringham has asked, if you were to bring a, uh, an American or European theme park show to a British theme park, what would it be and where would it be? Um, well, it will be Park Asterix, the massive stunt show they've got there uh, with all cars and explosions. There's even a cruise ship on the back that splits in half. It is in the Asterix vlog if you check it out on the channel. Um, but yeah, bring that to Drayton Manor. I think it'll fit lovely in the park's family theme. Uh, a big show venue would be great there. So thanks for that. David's asked, what top five UK theme parks have developed in the past five years? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I'll just talk a bit in general. Instead of naming the top five, obviously, we've seen some great investments uh, coming in the UK. I would say some of the best investments have come into Flamingoland. They've put in so much over the past five years. It's been sort of, from having nothing sort of about 10 years ago, it was more a fun fair rise than a zoo, turn it into a fully fledged resort, which it is now. Uh, you've had rides like Kamali, Mumbo Jumbo, Velocity, uh, Flip Flop, Pterodactyl, Dino Stone Park, so much stuff's gone in, along with improvements to the zoo to turn it into one of the best theme park zoos, if not the best theme park zoo there is out there. And so Flamingo Land definitely has done the best. Obviously, Drayton Man has expanded well with its family offering. Drayton, before Thomas Land opened in 2008, was struggling. Uh, and they've really revived that part with what they've put in. Air Race, again, great ride. So, yeah, some great investments. I wouldn't like to go through the top five. Uh, but, yeah, they're my favourite things that have gone in, really, in terms of investing for the what the park should have. Uh, I think it's great that they've done that, both both family parks as well. Merlin, we know they put in great investments on a sort of staggered every few years, close to three or four years at their parks. Um, but I think for the family parts to keep developing is what this country needs, definitely. So thanks for that question. Um, Stephen Bowley, which is your favourite out of Hero, Infusion and G-Force? He's obviously watched a lot of vlogs. You know that the three coasters what I'm not really massive fans of, but Hero out of them is the worst. Infusion's bad, but, uh, you know, which is my favourite? It's got to be G-Force, uh, mainly because I do like the lift deal. Yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable, you know, on the body. Uh, with the restraints, but yeah, it's quite good. So definitely G-Force, it's good out of them three. So there you go. Finally, Nathan Porter, how many roller coasters have you ridden? Oh, wow. I'm in the process of updating my coaster count at the moment, but it's over 400. 
Uh, it's a lot of rides. That's everything from a little funfair go gator coaster to a huge coaster like Shambhala. Um, so you gotta love how you Shambhala the reference. <laughs> you should have expected that to come in somewhere. Um, but yeah, there you go, over 400 coasters uh, and lots more to ride. I mean, going to California, gonna get loads of new credits there as well. Um, but it's not just about coaster credits that I like, it's the dark rides, the water rides, the flat rides that I'm massive fans of. I'd say I enjoy dark rides just as much as I do roller coasters. If you're not sure on the term dark rides, stuff like Jewel at Alton Towers, Transformers, uh, Universal, uh, you know, all them sort of rides, I do love my dark rides too. Thanks for your questions, send me in some more, keep them coming guys, for me and Charlotte, I'll answer four more next week on location on the show. So yes, it's time for the final section of the show, interact with me. Hope you've enjoyed it this week here on the channel. Like I say, next week's gonna be a big one. We're gonna be at Leesburg and at Thorpe Park and it's gonna be absolutely awesome. Let's have a little look what's been sent in then. Uh, Melanie Lowe has got a Splash Canyon on-ride photo from Drayton Manor. Cameron Sandler with a G-Force on-ride photo, also at Drayton Manor, thanks for those guys. And you've got Dylan Bates with a Saw on-ride photo from Thorpe Park. Uh, Nick Jones has had a photo with me there at Alton Towers. Great to meet you there. Loving the purple that I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, next up then you got Mark Cartwright with a photo at the Chained Oak. Yes, the Chained Oak does exist. If you didn't believe the heck story, go into Alton about a mile away from Alton Towers and you will see the Chained Oak tree still with chains on. Amazing. Uh, good luck to Ormiston Maritime Academy who have their exams this week. Hi out there to all of you and good luck in your exams. I'm sure you'll do great. You never know, they might even take you on a trip to a theme park. So there you go. Heather Jones with a swarm on ride photo at Thorpe Park. I love the swarm. Absolutely amazing coaster. And finally, Robert Lake. Now this is adorable. Uh, his daughter watches Theme Park Worldwide. Hi out there to you. And there is a photo. Uh, of me and her. How adorable is that? I'm glad you like the show. It just shows our age ranges from people all the way down that age right up to you know whatever age you want to watch. I'm glad you all enjoy the show. Like I say before I make next week's episode we are going to hit 20,000 subscribers so thank you very much to all of your support and I look forward to pr the foreseeable future bringing you stuff forever and stuff here on the channel. It's going to be great. Uh, I always get people asking me are you ever going to stop? No is the question because I don't just do this for you guys. I do it because I love looking back myself. All the vlogs and shows get put onto DVD and I keep it all, uh, you know, because I love looking back, knowing at the vlogs and looking at the different parks. It's great. So yes, of course I will be carrying on this for the foreseeable future. There's no reason at all why I would stop uh, doing what I do. I love it and I'm glad you guys love coming along for the journey uh, as well. Really, really good. Anyway, that's all for this week's episode of the show. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you again next week. Enjoy the vlogs. Loads to come over the next few weeks now. It's vlog heaven this season. Absolutely loads. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys. Have a great week.